Well, good morning and welcome to the latest instalment of Ball Cam. A little bit different this month. Uh, I've journeyed down into Cambridgeshire to meet up with my old friend Jason Can uh, to fish an extended session on Grenville Lake. Uh, it's a lake I've never fished before. Uh, Jason's fished it on a couple of occasions. So yeah, we're absolutely raring to go. Uh, we've been planning this trip for several weeks now and we're here. Let's go down and have a look at the swim that we're going to be fishing this week. Catch you in a bit. Ball cam out. Well, as the name suggests, yes, we're in the cabin swim for our uh, session. That's the cabin on the, uh, the right hand side, just as I'm making my way down. My bivvy on the left. And as you can see, it just opens up into the, uh, into the main swim. Awesome. Okay, let's go and have a little look where my rods are nestled in the reeds. There we go. That's a bit of me. I've got about a 10 mile an hour southwesterly pushing through. And, you know, really favourable conditions, certainly for uh, the time of year, early August. So, yeah, we've got some rods in play. Let's see what the first afternoon brings. Right, let's just pop next door and have a look at where Jason's fishing from. Well, here we go. This is Jason's swim. So, if we're looking on the uh, on the far bank, literally where, if you follow the line of Jason's middle rod, there's a protruding tree. So currently, we've got three rods. Middle one on the tree, one on the right, and one to the left. So this is the left-hand swim where we've got two nets set up. Also got nets in the uh, the swims that we're fishing from, and as per fishery rules, uh, the nets have to be uh, retained on stands, as you can see here. Right, let's move on to base camp. Yeah, one of the great things about uh, the lodge swim, you have to excuse the mess because we're kind of under construction at the moment. Oh, here we go. Jace is on with breakfast. So yeah, this is ideal just as our little uh, working base camp for the session. And it gives a tremendous view of the lake and a bit of shelter from the showers. Right. Sizzling. Fantastic. Okay, Sunday afternoon update. Uh, we're actually taking five minutes just to sit down, just to bring you up to speed with what we've already done uh, on arrival there at Grenville. So, Jace, rods out. Indeed. Bait out. Indeed. What's going on? I got a feeling. And when I get that feeling? Indeed. <laughs> we'll spare them some singing. Yeah, for now. But. Obviously, we're in the Grenville uh, Lodge Swim or the Cabin Swim. Yep. Um, you've gone on the right. Yep. I've gone on, we'll call it the middle, and we've got the left available to move if we've got to tinker around. It's quite neat having three swims, isn't it? So yeah. it just gives a bit of... You've just got options, haven't you? Absolutely, yeah. You know, obviously the right-hand one fishes out to the slightly shallower bits, 14, 15, 16 foot. Yep. I've gone slightly deeper and slightly longer. Uh, what are you? 26 wraps? Tw 27? Yeah, 20, 26 and a half wraps on the two rods, and then. You've the, swung one round. Yeah, the left hand rod is kind of off, sort of off the right of where you're fishing, so on that, the alternative, slightly deeper area. Yeah, and we pushed it a little bit longer there 28, 29, 30 wraps is what we baited at. Yep. Um, and then obviously the left, which we'll look at. That's where I had the good hit from back in the end of last year. Yeah, because you've you fished this particular swim a few times, so which I guess it just gives us options because I've got yeah. an idea of a few few areas we could drop onto. Yeah. Bait, drop onto them and just. Yeah. Um, well, and I think that's a key thing as well. I suppose when you're, you're visiting any venue for the first time, it's the more research and intel and knowledge that you can glean prior to the trip, it just makes your preparation so much easier, isn't it? And you've yeah. fished, yeah, yeah, how many yeah. times have you fished this swim now? What, three, four times? Yeah, four times. Okay, um, okay. I just love it. I 
just love the swim. Yeah. I mean, you know, as far as swims goes, it's Carlsberg. Oh, absolutely. I just, yeah, I just, I, I love the layout of it. I love the way that it felt when we got here. It just feels like, well, for the time we're here, this is our slap of water. Yeah, well, that's, so, that is the bonus, obviously, of this swim. Yeah. It's got so much water, what, 25, 30 acres, maybe? Yeah, it must be. Yeah, it must be. Significant amount of water. Um, obviously, you've got three fishing positions. Yeah. So you can move around the swim. Um, but how the other swims are all laid out, and obviously the distances, because Granville's a big lake. Yeah, was it 80 something acres? 87, I 87, believe. 87, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a big slap. A big slap of Cambridgeshire uh, water yep. indeed. And we've obviously we've got the island out there that yep. I believe is 300 ish from here. Okay. So, it's a know, fair chuck then. We ain't hitting that. No, we're know. not. No. Um, and uh, I have fished it long at sort of 40, 45 yep. laps. Um, you can do it. Uh, we could do that because we've got a, quite a big southwesterly. You know, 18 to 25 for the next 24 hours. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather not, if I'm being honest. No, but if we have to, then they, I suppose if they we push have. off us, yeah. we might have to chase them yeah. out. The idea is for us to bait quite heavily, which we've done with boily only. Hasten to add, yeah, as per fishery nice. rules. So, and the fish are in this bay at the minute, and if they're in yeah. the bay off the right platform, you fish fairly short. 25 to 30 wraps off these two platforms yep. and you can get bites but if the wind drops the fish then I think the fish then stop sort of yeah. backing off it yep. and we'll lose them and they'll just drift away from us but it could be to and fro sort yeah, of I think throughout so. the course of, of this week obviously it's Sunday today potentially we well I've got until Friday Saturday so there's there's a bit of time to make it happen and obviously what we've what we've set our stall out with initially is Two baited areas, yeah. Two strips are so basically two markers out in each swim. Yeah, bait between the two, and then bait between the two, and then at these ranges, obviously we can just just top up as and when with the spot. With the spot, yeah. Um, and if we need to put a hit of bait in, we'll work out how best to do it. Yeah. You know, as a top up hit. Yeah. Um, but I think as long as we don't get a complete reversal of winds, we'll do okay. Yeah. You know. Good. Well, this this hope so. Obviously. Carper creatures a habit, and I'm sure they have the habits on this particular lake. Well, what, what do you know? One of their strangest habits. Yep. Uh, Paul, the owner, was telling me. What say? Yup. No, I don't actually. Well, you will in a minute because <laughs> I tell you. Um, I've had a lot of conversations with Paul, and the, you know the amazing work he's doing here with his yep. fishery management. You know, it's you don't even need to question it. You just look at the lake yep. stats, and it's like he's doing it right. Yep. He tells me that 60 to 70 percent of the fish are always caught on the back of the wind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They may initially follow the wind, and you catch a few on the wind, and then maybe the undertows are so strong and they back off it, and they just back yeah. straight off it. Well, this has been blowing for what two days? We've got two day fresh wind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm expecting, and we've seen a lot of fish down in sort of like six, eight, nine, ten those sort of swims. Yeah, long, long, long way away, but... I'm expecting okay. them to, to push back up on us tonight. Okay. We've got kind of got ahead of the fish. We're all set up and in. Well, yeah, rigs are in. I'm expecting... Bait's in. Yeah. Um, actually, talking of rigs, just a quick mention in terms of what we're doing. On your recommendation, uh, we've, bo we've both gone with hinge rigs, haven't we, to start off with. So, pop-up rigs, two to three inch actual... Uh, pop-up sections and then what between 10 and 14 inches yeah, of I, yeah. of boom section on leg clips yes because there's okay. obviously there's a few very um, predominant rules on Grenville yep you know there's a, a lead size yep um, or a restricted lead size yep. no leaders no leaders or knots behind uh, the swivel the hook clip swivel. yes okay obviously tubing yep um, and uh, every lead has to be ejected on okay. the bite. Okay. Yeah. Purely for the fish safety. Yeah. It's a very weedy lake, and obviously Paul doesn't want to be going out 30 times a day. No, well you wouldn't want with to. With 10 would. different no. anglers to, to un unweed fish, you know. So. Um, no, very, very good, mate. Very sensible rules. No, very good. Yeah. Well, it's great to be here. And uh, yeah. We'll have a fish <laughs> and a catch up. <laughs> well, because I ain't seen you for a, well for the whole of COVID, have I? Uh, yeah, true. So yeah, this is uh, just to 
confirm the scene. This is really, it's yeah, it's our it's our holiday week, and it, it would have been absolutely rude not to have documented it with the uh, with the ball cam. So it's great to be here. It's good to see you, and um, and with what's swimming around in there, yeah. mate. You know, yeah, it's a bit of a treat. You only need one bite, mate, and you know one of us could get very lucky. Yeah, buzzer, mate. Superb. Right. Let's do this. Let's see who gets the first fish. <laughs> you know who it's going to be. Me. Me. Or him. <laughs> you go either way. Anyway, brilliant. We'll catch you later. That's most certainly for now. Ball come out. Okay, quick check on the rods. The wind's certainly pumping, but the bobbins are not jumping. Plenty of bait out there, so we're going to have to give it a whirl. I don't think we're expecting a bite just yet. Anyway, back through the undergrowth. Let's go and see what can is up to. Spot rods and marker rods on the side. And back into base camp. I suspect can is messing with rigs and hook baits. Oh yeah, what's he up to? Hmm, dangerous. Bait selection for this session, 15mm silt and matching smart liquid. Check this lot out. Quality. Well, let's get it in the pond. It's no good here. Okay, that's five kilos in there. And it's no good in there. Let's get it out in the pond. This is going to hurt. halfway yeah it's getting there now they're going out really well actually so yeah let's see what this cell and uh, smart liquid has to say for itself right back to it another half bucket ball come out see you in a minute which is probably a bit less than half a bucket it's going well right let's crack on Good evening. Well, that's two hours of spotting done. We're both absolutely shattered. Uh, the lake looks totally majestic in the background. And yeah, the work is done. The bait's out. We've gone in pretty heavy again. Two hours spotting. Um, I've put probably, I don't know, maybe 50 spoms uh, on my right hand rod. And then the rest of the bait we've concentrated here at 29 wraps. So it's pretty hard work getting it out with the spom and a bit of a crosswind, but. The work is done, the bait is out. Uh, I've gone for two rods, uh, as you're looking from here to the right hand side of uh, that tree. Uh, and Jay's gone with his three rods to the left. So we've concentrated the feed, 29 wraps. And uh, yeah, it's certainly made us work for it. So we've got one last job to do this evening before we sit down and have some food. And that's to prep tomorrow's bait. And then I think we'll pop a can of cider and sit back and chill out and just take in well, it was an abs absolutely breathtaking evening. Look at it, it's incredible. All right, that's it from me. Anything else happens before dusk, I shall be back. If not, we'll see you in the morning. Ball cam out. Take care. Good evening. You see me here in my bait kitchen. Right, 10K bag, 15 mil cell, bottle of smart liquid one squirt in there already. And what that gives me gives me room to put about 100 mil hot water in there. 
and I did some tests with this in my bake room at home. And the warmer you make this, yeah, I'll show you, the better it spreads. Now what's that? So then I got my bake spoon and the bit that I've already put in the top of the bag mixes with the hot water. Under a minute, you can coat 10 kilos. I'll just give that a minute to soak in, then I'll turn it over and I'll just, uh, just make sure the bottom of the bag is done as well. I will now do this banquet of other 10 kilo bags. So there's a finished bag. That one's been prepped, that's been prepped, that's been prepped, that's been prepped. So it's now top back on. Just be a little careful, don't use boiling water, let the kettle just cool off for a second because you'll now find that's pressurised and if you're not, if you're not careful this will happen. <laughs> and that's hot, so. And then. And if there's a little bit left in the bottom, just do it again. Plenty of carp anglers will have a good wrist action. your first Grenville fish mate so I'll video that. Not a ten pounder, I know that one. Mm -hmm. Put the tube in here. Yeah. We've got three foot of tube in.
know where that vortex came from. <laughs> Bridge exit boy. Let's do some scooping, old chap. I say we bloody got it. Hold on. Go on the pink. That'll do, won't it? <laughs> That's a cool cut, mate. Yeah. That's a cheese. Come here, my beauty. Well, we are up and running in style. Sunday evening, just before eight o'clock, and uh, my left hand rod uh, cast the right of the baited area has absolutely torn off and I'm well somewhat lost for words my first ever Grenville carp what an absolute amazing fish to start the session crazy absolutely crazy Thirty-five, fifteen. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. That'll do. Wow, this bodes really well. Rainbows and flat spots, they are on us. Well, if this is the first couple of hours, mate. Bodes three, well. I've had three bites. You've got one in the net ready for us to have a look at. You've done a 35. <laughs> Good hand. Defiant flick, eh? That's what they all say. Right, let's do yours. Alright. Well, there we go. 
my second fish of the evening, hooked at the same time as Jason's, and uh, the roll continues. Another absolute belter. <laughs> yes, we're happy, very happy. An amazing start to the first day on this Grenville session. I think for tonight it's probably ball cam out. See you later. What a morning, what a sunrise. And check out the slick from our spot. That's been kicking off for about half an hour now. They're on it. Sadly, these aren't moving. Something doesn't seem quite right. And as the sun starts to rise, the spot is still slicking and slicking. So, morning. It's a bit of a nippy one. Yeah. But it has been from the time that we've been up. Yes, indeed. Uh, 5 a.m. start for us how, both. How was your sleep? Not great. Me neither. Not great. I usually, after a four and a bit hour drive from Devon to here, yep. you're knackered. Yeah, yeah. You don't sleep the night before because we're still kids. I was excited. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> you know, and obviously the logistics of setting up and half a ton of gear each into the swim, it's a big job. It's a logistics job. And we're old. Ish. Yeah, not getting Ish. older. Ish. However, there is a spring in our step this morning. Because we caught. Because we've caught. And I think we've done well. Yes. I think we've done well. It's been a bloody good start. You've done your first Grenville fish. Yeah, um, unbelievably, really. Because, um, well, we did, we baited heavily. It's the first day, so obviously we wanted to establish the spot. So it was, you know, we, we've gone into the evening, we've had a lovely bite to eat, both shattered. And eight o'clock, my left hand rod has just absolutely Melt. melted. And I'm, you know, when you're just in disbelief when you've had a bite, and you think, well, <laughs> well no, not, you, not already, it can't be. You, you'd left. I was making us a coffee. Yeah. And I think you just nipped to pick up some of the hook baits in the in the log. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you left the receiver with me. Yeah. And you'd not turned your back for more than 15 seconds. Well, no one heard, Jess, it's yours! And I'm like, <laughs> you know when you're just like, it can't be. So any, anyway, I've picked up into it. The rod's properly ramped round to the left. You bend and one. Yeah, it was, it was properly going. And um, yeah, I've picked up into it and straight away I thought, that that feels all right and you know a dogged fight it kept deep well it dumped the lead the lead's come off so coiled it on a tight line yeah and it just kited all over mine yeah it kited over the top of your rods and then we've, yeah. we've netted it in the in the left hand swim, the left -hand swim. which was you know which was just perfect but both of us have peered into the net and it's like a breeze block across the shoulders so my initial thought was that you know that could be a mid 30 which i thought it was a bit bigger well I don't know, I'd gone a bit jelly at that point because it's like, first time you've been, well, second time I've been to the lake, first time I fished it, and then you get a bite within sort of six hours of, or seven hours of, of being here, and it's yep. just, that's just crazy. And consulting my, my well, notes. What, was you, what did you put in your notes? 35.15. Yes, I remember that. 8 p.m., left hand rod, 29 wraps, hinge stiff rig, pink, pink, pink pop up. <laughs> so, anyway, 1 0. One so um, I didn't want to feel outdone. No. So I can't remember what I cooked us. Oh, big burgers, onions. Yeah, I was Jack absolutely. Jack barbecue it was sauce. Pure filth. It was uh, Austrian smoked melted cheese on top of the burger. It wasn't bad. It was a good effort. It was a good effort. And we didn't even have time to go to bed, did we? Well. No, because we'd eaten, and then it was like, right, okay, well, what's going to happen next? And consulting my notes again, 11 o'clock. It was. Your right-hand rod fished on the same line as where I had my bite, but you were one wrap further. You were at 30. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that fish, I've put zip, because it was that oh, zip. Oh, it was zip. Oh, mate, what a fish. It was, yeah, 30 pound, two ounces, zip linear, like a torpedo, and it fought like a torpedo. Mate, it's just an angry male. You know, a bit like you, in the morning. Oh, morning, yes. <laughs> morning, mate. Oh, wonderful. Sun's coming out. It's beautiful. Beautiful now. That's possibly my nicest looking fish from here. So yeah, far. it's amazing, mate. 
it was um, it was just all muscle mate no wonder it rubbed like it did you know yeah um, but you can see when you pick it up you know them tuna you see on the TV sea fishing show yeah and you you pick them up and they're just going you know in their muscles it wasn't it wasn't happy mate it no, wasn't happy and that wasn't the end of it though was it no well while you were playing yours I thought I'd picked up one of your rods. Yeah, and so I've gone around to investigate, and it was my right hand rod, and then that was bent the other way. So, <laughs> off the other baited spot, double um, tape was in double like tape. seconds. So, and again, it was a bit of a head scratcher because I thought, oh, yeah, you'd pick me up. But anyway, I've played it in, and literally, we probably netted them about uh, probably about the same time. Yep. So, that fish was a 30 pound 11 ounce mirror, 27 wraps, off the other baited spot. Yep. So, but Literally, it was high, high fives at half past 11 at night. Yeah. But the strange thing that we found after, because we can't help but analyse it. Well, you have to. You know, yeah. we've done a lot of matches. And even when you try and fish socially, or socially yeah. like we are, this is a boy's catch-up trip. It's a yeah. holiday. I just went into analytical mode of why did that one go? Why didn't that? Because yeah, yeah. them fish have got to have come over other rods to get the rods yeah and ironically we've had two bites now off the right hand edge yep of the main baited area yes and your other bite was on the right hand edge of the slightly lesser baited yep. area and we've only been fishing eight you know what seven eight hours yep we're just we're picking them off just on the edges yeah i'm expecting as the session develops rods fished further into the middle of the baited spots yeah should be the spots get established um you know the whatever we're fishing over should start to get cleaner and more polished um and then the bait actually becomes the feature well absolutely yeah, yeah. absolutely so obviously we'll, we'll take a look at the bait in in more detail yeah. um at another point within within this trip but certainly yeah to to come into monday morning with with three fish um, is incredible and I guess we, we've got to say you know we're we're expecting of action this morning you know we it looks should, good we should have some. it looks good it feels good and I'll tell you what it's a hell of a it's a hell of a relief after night one <laughs> you know and going into sort of like you know well it was a bit of a gamble baiting heavy yeah yeah and obviously I've come in here I've done the exact same tactics before yeah and I found if you bait heavy you, sometimes you've got to give it 24 hours of yep. no action yeah, because my prediction was we wouldn't get any bites until this afternoon. Well, we got we got that wrong, didn't we? So, which I'm quite happy to get wrong. Anyway, pink two, yellow one. Let's see how that uh, develops. To be revised. Anyway, right, should we be heading off breakfast time? I think. Oh, I'm cooking again. Then. Probably. I'll wash up. Deal. Bull out. Can, Can out. out. Be seeing you. Well, the weather's done exactly as the forecast predicted. It's grim. Very grim. But I'm in the dry out of the way, so that's, that's just fine. Anyway, Mr. Can is baiting up, so I'm going to offer him some moral support and stay in the dry out of the way. Get it out there, boy. Well, we appear to have a couple of drips on the lens. Oh well, never mind. Anyway, Jason just getting his left hand rod back out. Freshened up, bait out, rod's redone, it's looking good. One of the difference that a couple of hours makes. Anyway, Mr. Can's got a fish on. Let's get in and investigate. Afternoon, bud. Right hand rod. A little bit of checking how the spot was feeling after those big winds yesterday. Maybe with some of this undertow shifting some of the weed and stuff about. That's got to happen. And after a reach up 20 minutes, bang. It's on the yellow.
Well, mate, this is what we've this is what we've managed to get. Push your head slightly towards me, mate. That'll be. Uh, that is a magnificent. Shot, mate. The truth. Prediction. <laughs> it's so tricky. I thought it was a little bit bigger th than it is. Give me a number. Oh, it's 34, 35 pounds. Okay. To be fair, I think we were both off, mate. Yeah. 32 2. I'm not complaining. No, no, no. Well, that's. It just looks, it looks thicker. Don't we all? Thicker. Right, let's get it back. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. Thanks, that's, I make that two apiece. Indeed. 2 2. Two pink, two yellow. Game on. <laughs> right, well, here we go. It's only the fourth bite of the session, but fantastically enough, it's the fourth 30 pounder. That'll do. And it is an absolute stunning one. That's what I had that fish on. Slightly different version to a hinge stiff rig. That's something I've been messing with lately. Hmm. We'll go into it more detail later. That was a good one. We like good ones. It's quite hard work with this crosswind, but it would appear we need to keep the bait going in. No surprise. There's lots of fish in here and they're big and they're clearly hungry, so let's get swarming. It's like riding a bike, this spotting lark. I haven't fished long for quite a long time, so this is like fishing four years ago on linear. Bucket after bucket and you get fit. You might have noticed in the time since I've been there, I'm not fit, I'm fat. <laughs> so anyway, practice makes perfect. Evening. Evening. How are we doing? Chilling. 
Hmm. Fairly tired, actually, JC. Well, we've done a lot of work, mate. Hmm. And some mental arithmetic. Yes. And puzzling. Yes, trying to fathom out what's going on. Anyway, you have news. I do have news. From earlier this afternoon. Go on, tell us all about it. Well, as it happens, it's quite interesting little tactical... What should we call it? A bit of a tactical gambit, wasn't it? It was like, I had a hunch. Yeah, you had a hunch there was something going on. Yes. So you reacted to it. Well, we had fish during the night. Yes. We expected more. Correct. And at the first light when we got up, we had dry nets. Mm. Figuratively, even though the nets are in Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. I expected at least another couple of bites, if not a couple each. They were on us, mate. They mm. came in and they yep. smashed us. So, we gave it the morning spell, we had coffees, we watched, we did the usual stuff. And I think it was about... Half twelve-ish. I yeah. had a gut feeling. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, probably about midday. It was like something's not quite right here. And had we, now just remind me. I think I, I redid two of my rods much earlier, you didn't did I? Them early. Yeah, I did them early just out of curiosity because yeah. again by eight o'clock I'm thinking we should have had. Those. You kind of think, well, even if you've made it through to first light, and I was up because I was up early and there was a glorious sunrise. Yeah. It was incredible. Um, and you're thinking, well. One out of six rods should at least gone, and it hasn't. So something was wrong. Yeah, I redid mine, and you left yours in. I left mine in, yeah. mate, because I was astounded that we'd not had more bites. Mm. So you know what it's like when something's nagging in the back of your head. You just, you know, you can't set it. Mm. So sort of midday, I said to you that I was going to do a controlled experiment. Yep. You leave yours in. because yep. You've redone them. I was going to do a complete three rod rechuck. Crank them all in. Rebaited, yep. sharpened hooks, gone back out, and despite baiting heavily, only like 12 hours previous, yep. I then topped up with the spot, yep. and I put about 20, 25 spots out onto the 30-ish wrap spot, which would have been what two, maybe what hub, two o'clock perhaps, maybe a tiny bit later. Yeah, because I think by the time we'd sort of Reprepped and done everything else, and we did a bit of filming and this and that, didn't we? So and time then, time crept on. And then literally, I put the spot rod down, came in, made us a coffee. Yep. Bang! The right hand rod's gone. The two thirty. Chinese dentist. Indeed. Mm. So we then obviously deal with the fish, etc., etc., which we'll come to in a minute. But the interesting point is, it was on the right hand rod that was on the outside of the bait. Yep. Again. Again. So that went for me twice. Your left, which was next to my right, has gone once. Yes. And your right right, on the edge of your baited area, has gone. Has gone once, yeah. So it's just a little bit of an odd coincidence that the rods on the main baited spot haven't gone. Mm. But on day one, you'd kind of expect that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but what surprised me was the bait up induced the bite. Can't be coincidence. No, it, it it kind of it does figure. Although I think what we reasoned was there probably was still bait out there on the main spot, but the introduction of do you think it's just maybe something through the water column, just maybe something on the drift, something to pull just them in. Ring in the bell. Maybe. But it look either way it works. So it's deep. Don't forget it's deep. Yeah, true. I mean it's not super deep. Yeah. Because the thirty wrap spots only 16, 17 foot. Yeah. My prime spot which we're going to look at and work on tomorrow, yep. is 20, 25 foot yep. at 40 to 45 wraps. Yep. You know, that's like a different animal. You know, the, the yeah, it's a, big, it's a big difference. Yeah. Big difference. Then anyway, remind me, how how big was said fish? Because it was a lovely fish. 32-2. 32-2. One of them peachy, apple-sliced, linear one side, scattered scales the other Beautiful. side. Beautiful. Beautiful. But it was one of them chestnut brown ones, wasn't it? You know... Um, Oh, we like them. So I make that two all. It's two all, and it's two on the yellow for me. Two on the pink. Two on the yellow. Yeah. Battle on. Indeed, mm. mate. Indeed. Well, no, that's um, that's good little catch up, that mate. I think we're both probably expecting, aren't we? Rods back out. We've we've rebated again. Um, 
and I guess sort of repeat that cycle again and let's see what this you know this evening segment brings us um, we've had a bit of rain the winds picked up and then strangely the wind did actually switch for about half an hour didn't it from going southwesterly where it's been sort of seven eight miles an hour all day came in northeast yeah just literally for half an hour yeah. strange yeah. But we all know that how quickly fish react to wind yep we'll just have to see if that brings them because here we've obviously we've got an island at 300 ish yards yeah there's lots of fish visible on the right hand side yeah and lots visible on the left and obviously the southwesterly is kind of sucking them slightly yeah, yeah. away but if this northeasterly keeps up mate they'll just follow it straight yeah they'll Nick. follow it straight in mate and we're right in right in the path well let's hope so anyway good luck for the night old boy and let's feed indeed ball come out indeed. we'll catch you in the morning unless something good happens So mate, this, I call it the pagoda, you can call it Yeah, well it, it's, it's home, it's, it's been sanctuary from... Oh, I don't think we've left it, have we? No, no, uh, obviously quite a lot, quite a lot <laughs> of, of rain. quite a lot of rain overnight and uh, yeah, a shift in wind direction and unfortunately... Well that wind's died, what did I say would happen if that wind died? The, the sport would also die with it and unfortunately it has so that's what I was hoping I was going to be wrong and yeah. they would stay on us but we've seen a lot of fish you know visually even at three four hundred yards we're seeing fish now in front of six eight uh, and obviously in front of uh, ten and twelve yeah but at monster range no they're not they're not it doesn't feel like they've I'm seeing fish yeah. around us but I'm not seeing a herd. No, it's uh, it's it's changed, isn't it? And I suppose if we're breaking this down into into 12-hour segments, what we know about probably quarter past eight. Yeah. If we roll back 12 hours to sort of you know eight o'clock yesterday evening, I think we were you know the wind had changed, the weather had changed a bit, and you know I think we were expecting, but the result is absolutely diddly squat. It's no. been very very quiet. I in my head we needed that wind almost stay at sort of 25 southwesterly yeah if not get bigger and that would have just pushed them more off the back of it i think the winds died and you know what carp do when they sense a change in whatever's happening yeah they didn't they kind of then just filter out of wherever they've gone you know the conditions push them into an area for a reason those conditions change they then go let's have a look over here or let's have a look over there. and they just they've just drifted off us for the time being yeah, it, it doesn't seem to be down to angling pressure because there are, there's, how many people on would you say, what, maybe five anglers on, including us? Yeah, it's, so, it's not busy. And everybody's kind of spread out and certainly where, you know, as I'm sort of gesticulating now, kind of far behind the island, it's clearly been fished down there and, you know, we've seen the guy, I think, what, his head, oh, torch, yes. head torch flicked on, I think, twice during the night. Yeah. Um, I did see a torch over on the other bank as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was no torch action for us. So, but thankfully, some nice coffees. Indeed. Um, Jack Daniels. Yeah, with single a, barrel. That was very nice. Um, Almost too good for fishing. And good food as well. Good food. You got mates hungry. It yeah. Well, we like to eat. We do like to eat, don't we? Properly. 
Um, and with this setup, you know, it's great just having, well, <laughs> you can get your cookers Mate, you, you and haven't all got, you pots haven't got and pans. You have got a lot better at home in your house, have you? This um, is like a summer house. All I'll say is thank the Lord for just eat. And you like to cook as well, so look, that, that was the highlight of yesterday evening. Um, so I wouldn't say we're despondent. No, it, it's a big pit, mate. How yes. many times can you go to a big pit and you can't have it off every day? Fish move. No, clearly, mate. They, they move, mate, and they move on here an awful lot. Yeah, I bet they do. And I'll make a little prediction. We're seeing a lot of fish out. It's called the triangle. Yeah. It's roughly out in front of swim 34 and opposite swim 17, 16, 14. You think of a massive, like, 50-acre triangle. Yeah. Those fish are at three, 400 yards, and they just sit in that little... Yeah, they're just out of the way. They can't be fished for there. And as the winds change, the triangle shifts that way. Yeah, OK. When the wind's in our favour, the triangle of where the fish congregate shift over to us. And you pick up bites, and then they drift yeah. off, and then they drift back. And all that's happened, the wind changed, and they've drifted off. Yeah. No, we, it makes sense, and obviously that's then showed in our, it'll pendulum our lack back of activity. In our favor tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, and we should pick up bites again. Okay, good. Well, let's hope so. But we've got some work to do, mate. We've got to get some bait. Yeah, we do. We do. Coffee, and then bait. And then coffee. Okay, it's a deal. Right, let's do it. Get on. Someone's been busy while I've been away. Now this is extreme rig production. Good lad, Jace. Nice one. We ain't gonna run out now. He's going to touch the rigs. Well, we've redone the rods. Final tinkering, getting the bobbin sorted. The wind's picked up, the rain has gone, and it feels good for a bite. Really good for a bite. about 10.30 p.m. Uh, Wednesday evening, fish number seven for the trip, fourth fish for me, uh, on my left hand rod again, at 29 wraps, uh, we've rebated fairly heavily this morning and it's been really quiet all day and a very much welcome Grenville mirror has come our way, fantastic. For now, it's ball cam out, might see you again later this evening failing that we'll catch you in the morning all right mate let's get you back morning 7 30 a.m update thursday morning the skies are blue the sun's out and i'm nestled in the reeds just out of the mild breeze so yeah it's an absolutely glorious morning uh, just to bring you up to speed with activity overnight just the one bite between us 
uh, which fell to my left hand rod, which is the 29 wrap spot, at just after half past 10. So uh, we've landed and dealt with the fish, did the photos, did the weigh in, a little bit of video, and the fish was just over 30 pounds, proper little chunk. Uh, some might say a fatty and it had yeah awesome two-tone colors on one side so yeah very uh, uh, easily identifiable fish um, and that was it which was a surprise because we've had sort of fits and starts of activity uh, through the session thus far and I think we were both confident of another bite you know we've got four rods on that area uh, that shallow plateau out there at range and it just it just didn't happen uh, there weren't really uh, any any other signs of fish just prior to when I got my bite just start to get a few liners and where we're fishing long up onto a plateau uh, and there's deeper water in front of us you know I'm pretty convinced as fish are moving through you do get the you know the odd fish hitting your lines so you know they are legitimate liners not being picked up and done uh, but yeah that that was it for the night and um, I've certainly had a good sleep I've been I've been up since five o'clock watching the water and I've not seen a thing uh, in our area of the lake. I've seen a few fish jumping around by the island, as they do, uh, in no man's land. Uh, and, and to be honest, that's been about it. So I think I'm gonna stick the kettle on again and enjoy this morning's sun. Ball cam out for now, catch you later. He's on, mate. Well, that's interesting, because I'd just written the day off. <laughs> well, you can, because you probably won't be able to hear me properly, but just explain what we were talking about in terms of morning and daytime action while you're playing this in. Well, we've just been sat here this morning and we saw... Oh, sorry, I nearly fell in. <laughs> and we saw fish just beyond the spot at 7am, 8am, 9am. And I wasn't happy because I didn't quite get out as sweetly as I wanted to on dusk last night. And you got a bite and I didn't. And put that back in the clip for the recast. So I took a gamble and had them all three in and I pinged out three fresh rigs. And the activity in the swim just died. And we were thinking we're going to give it till lunchtime, reel in and rebate. Well it's 12 midday now. So I just think something's obviously, the wind's picked up. We were talking mm. about the wind and we wanted it to get stronger and stronger, which it has done. It's just got caught up in some weed there. So. And we've had about an hour of what I would call a nice, decent breeze. Mm. And fish have started to back up off the wind and come back onto the spot. And to be fair, that's probably one of the most violent bites I've had. But I'd written the day off. I, d I really didn't think they were going to come in, but this wind has done us a big favour. I think we need to relocate to yours, mate. I'm kiting over you. Okay. over your two on the baited area and obviously your right hander's over there. Alright, let me just put you down. Mate, that was a bite and a half. Still rolling by the way. <laughs> okay, I'm back with you. Just move that rod out of the way. Thanks, mate. Right. Well, it's actually.
actually a gorgeously warm day and I reckon we've got a I don't know 12 15 mile an hour southwesterly sprung up and it just seems to just click them on Right mate, we seem to have done like a 60 yard kite, so I'm going to nip next door, so follow me. Okay. Right, I've got much more room here, and we're completely out of the way of the other rods. Here we go, bite number eight for a piece. Uh, it's looking much better now, the wind's picked up, it's brought some fish back on us, and literally within an hour of the right wind, bang, we get a bite. They drifted off us, they're now back, so let's get this one weighed up and get some more bait put back out in the swim, and then we're gonna have a little talk through the rigs. Good afternoon, it's that time of the session. Uh, what have we done now? Four nights? Five nights, Jace? Is um, it bad that we can't remember? I don't, know. I don't know, yeah, it's four, it's four nights anyway. Um, there's been, we think, quite an interesting development with sort of our rig evolution uh, over the course of the session. So, um, and obviously we both kind of had some ideas of mm. what we would, what would be our starting point kind of what is the done thing on here and then maybe well, and sticking to what is allowed yes within the rules of course so um jace do you want to start off with what you kicked off with and why and well, then yeah, very, where you got to with it very quick backstory i've been fishing small tricky waters yeah fish um i've been fishing wafters over boiling yep um i didn't think it would be that workable in this particular swim having okay. fished it but i tried it for a couple of days yeah i got one uh, it was one bite wasn't it yeah you did just, yeah yeah just got one bite on that actually just, we, if you uh, you talk about it i'll hold it there just we go just a 17 pound fluorocarbon yeah nine to 12 inches i lengthened it here just because the bottom's a little bit you know it's just not that friendly a bottom yeah and then just a D-rig, however you prefer doing your D-rigs to a size six wide gate. Um, yeah. Obviously here it's got to be a straight shank, no curves of any sort. Yeah, so it's got to be a straight shank hook, yeah. nothing um, bigger than a size six. No. Okay. Um, so that's what I started. Uh, Long and soft. Yes, mate. But just difficult for them to, to, to get away with when you boily fish. Yeah. Um, but what? Preferably on a cleaner, Cle as harder, as bottom yeah. as possible. Which is not what we've got out in front of us. No, but my stubbornness wanted me to try what I've been catching a lot of fish on. So. Yeah, I guess we all kind of do that. You get into wherever else you've been fishing, you kind of get confident, and then that's almost what you default to it was, when you go somewhere else. However, what we had talked about... Yeah, we came prepped. We came we prepped. Had, we had 20 of these tied up. So we probably got, I reckon, 10 inches of stiff fluorocarbon boom, and then... Just a standard yeah. chod link, basically. Yeah, size uh, size eight ring swivel, uh, just onto a short chod section. Again, straight shank hook, uh, slightly outturned eye. Um, yeah, just like that. So that was kind of that was the next that was the yeah, next yeah, evolution, yeah, yeah. and that's that's done us bites. I think that's done three of my four fish uh, with the pink pop up as well. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of we did edge our bets, didn't we? Well, you, you got to. Cause yeah. When you're, when you're, you know, you're obviously blasting 30 wraps I'll here. put that one down. Indeed. You'll probably have it on later. 
I hope so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's interesting, obviously, the hook bait in, uh, in combination with the rig. I kind of sort of favoured pink. You kind of went more with yellow. And actually, it was pink, yellow, pink, yellow. And it's been a mix. It's I yeah. think the hook bait colour's not been... Well, we're in 16 foot. Yes. The water is not Grenville clear. I've Every session I've been here, it's been like tap water. Yeah. <clears throat> um, obviously, the floods in the winter, some algae, weed, whatever. Um, it's now just a little bit murky. Yeah. But the edges are clearing. Yeah. Um, and I thought the brights or the slightly washed out would still do us okay, but I expected or hoped that it would be back to its clear. Yeah, because obviously this time of year it's not really the time for no, fluoros, no. is it at all? But so these, I've, I've dulled them down; they're washed out. You know, to be fair, they are. You know, they are very dulled down. Um, Plus, I wanted the yellows because we were going to be putting in quite a bit of cell. Yeah. Once you've had cell in the water for an hour or two hours, it's almost white. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, out in 16 foot, a washed out yellow and a white cell is almost matching the hatch I guess isn't it yeah so yeah. maybe the yellows will pick up on the second second part of the week no it makes sense mate you know. anyway rig evolution number three now we've both caught on this haven't we I think our last Today. my last fish and your last fish so that is again the same or similar well I I just do it slightly different yeah I've got a hook with a slightly bigger eye yeah which means I can go through three times yeah so rather than having the uh, the micro ring swivel and the bead, yeah, which I actually prefer, but I, I prefer it. But that's a, yeah. that's a, an intricate rig detail for another time. It really. is indeed. Uh, but then we've got a longer boom section, which is actually what semi stiff coated braid. Yep, yep, I love it. I've How long it. is that? It's got to be a foot. Yeah, 12, 13 inches. Yeah, onto a leg clip setup, which is again fishery rules here. I've gone for a size 11 ring swivel because yep. my hook is slightly bigger yeah the gauge of your hook slight yeah it is you okay know. and then you've just put what a tungsten sinker on the middle yeah just but so an extra long yeah sleeve because yeah, to kick it out on the cast and then any sort of side or front wind you need every little bit of help firing yeah. that forward you've got to hit the clip hard um you know not hard enough where it's going to bounce back but you've got to hit the clip hard go with it and yep. remember we've talked before about cushioning the cast especially with longer rigs absolutely because we've used we've used those before in years gone by the 18 inches like foot. the confidence rig wasn't it yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously that just means that if I'm the weed bed yeah it can it can basically you know yeah and you're still fishing yeah it's, it's which is know, the beauty of uh, yeah, it's, a, it's what everyone uses where you can get away yeah. with a soft boom fantastic well, that's where we're at with the rigs yep. and the hook baits. See what we come up with tomorrow. Indeed. And let's see what the afternoon brings. Cider? Definitely. Let's do it. Ball come out. Indeed. Catch you in a bit. Well, the rain is back. Definitely an afternoon to seek sanctuary. And that wind is really picking up again. Afternoon, 5 p.m. update. The weather's taken a turn for the worse. This was not forecast. So, two fish this afternoon for Jason, uh, which bodes well. Um, a 25 and a 15, both mirrors. And we've got rods back out and we've got bait out in the pond. So, I think I'm going to uh, go and retire and get my jacket on. Yeah, that wind is absolutely hammering now. So, yeah, proper weather change. This looks good. So, yeah, let's see what happens. Hopefully, I'll be reporting back. Uh, before dark, but I'm getting a bit wet now, so I'm going to make a run for it. Ball come out, catch it a bit. was a slow and steady take meaningful and at this point where I'm walking back the fish is locked up in weed and I've managed to get it moving a couple of times but now it's gone proper solid trying to change the line angle tightening back into it and as you can see by the look of disgust on my face the hooks pulled and I'm winding in a dirty great weed bed 
it wasn't to be this time. Good evening. Good evening. Let me just slick that off. All right, I think we're out of danger now. Uh, quick catch up just while I'm playing this. I do not want the same thing to happen as what happened before. Uh, yeah, that bite at seven o'clock, the fish ended up locking me solid in the weed. And probably over the course of about an hour and a half, we managed to get it moving two or three times. And uh, we finally thought we were making some progress and then the hook pulled. And everything about the fight, um, I've actually got the take on, um, on camera and it just felt like a big fish bite. So um, I've, been I've been licking my wounds for the past couple of hours and uh, we called it about half past 10 and said, right, we need to go to bed. And, but I'm over it now. And uh, the same rod's just gone. So no messing this time. As soon as I got the bite, uh, to be fair, I was on the rod pretty quickly once I'd fumbled around and found my glasses. Um, and literally just started walking straight back and ended up by the lodge. And uh, that's the fish on the surface now. The thing is, it's fine. Once you get it away from the, uh, from the shallow spot, which I'm fishing, which is only 14 foot, it drops down into the deeps. So it's just a case of getting them away from it. Because to the right hand side of the spot, probably 20 yards is a really, really, really dense weed bed. So, so far, so good. Catch you in a moment. fish either. Well done, mate. Rolling. Okay. Oh, that's a bit bigger than what we've had. Well, we got him. I'm pretty blown away, to be fair, after that loss earlier on. And what, within two hours of losing that fish, redoing the rod, sort of regrouping, and it's gone again. I'm very intrigued to know how big this is. This feels heavy. Awesome. Absolutely loving this. Right then, mate. To get a couple of pictures and get you weighed. Forty-five thirteen. Forty-five thirteen. That is mental. That is mental. It's mental. Isn't it funny, those poignant moments when it, it all goes right, when not so long before it's all gone wrong and I was left at this moment just absolutely speechless and that's what it does to us. When it goes right, it blows your head up and that's why we do it. Incredible moments, incredible times, absolute mind-bending. It's just perfect. I think it was less than an hour and that rod was off again. And at this point I was just punch drunk and absolutely sleep deprived. And looking like death. And this felt also 
another good fish. Ridiculous. He coming. Well, here we go again. Yeah, it's another unit. What an unbelievable night's fishing. I don't know really what more I can say other than sometimes every dog has his day. Woof, woof. Morning, morning. 6 a.m. Friday morning update. It's been a night of very little sleep, but plenty of fish hauling action, um, which I'm incredibly grateful for. You know, you don't get uh, too many nights angling like that, especially on a venue that you've never uh, you've never really fished before. So, anyway, plan from yesterday was we would redo any rods uh, this morning that hadn't gone in the night, just to refresh them, put them back out. Uh, so yeah, Jace is just uh, redoing uh, his two rods now, or three rods now, so I'm going to give him a hand and uh, we will see what this morning brings. Hopefully some more fish and possibly a bit of sleep, because we do look, both of us, like the walking dead this morning. We'll come out. Catch you later. 
Well, here we are. Point in case, this is exactly why we're redoing the rods if they haven't gone. These have been out since yesterday afternoon, or well, certainly early, early evening. It's just that time of year where there is some uh, dying siltweed on the lake bed, especially on the plateau that we're fishing to, which is 16 foot. So what we're finding is, obviously, whether it's due to the undertow or whatever, but certainly when we, uh, we bring the rods back in, uh, they're getting clagged up as you can see here. So uh, we can't really take the risk of not having hook, hook baits fishing out there. So in they come, clean them off and get them back out again. So there's one that's ready to go. That's one. One. Fire in the hole. Jace, yes, talk to me. I'm tired. You look tired. I look like death. <laughs> and I've not caught in there. I know. <laughs> but I've enjoyed your night. No, it's been, <laughs> it's been one hell of a night. And a good and a good start to the morning anyway. Uh, rods are redone. Bait's out. I reckon we should pinch an hour's sleep. Separately. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> your cab in my bivvy. Yes. Yeah. No, mate. Last night was the exact reason I invited you down. Mm. That's what I wanted you to experience. Yeah, it was pretty. Well, it's just yeah, it was nuts, absolutely crazy. So. Grenville magic, mate. That's mm. what it's called. Yeah, hell yeah. Go on, let's get some sleep. And if we do it right, we got another, <laughs> got another dozen night tonight of it. I need some sleep. <laughs> do you know what? In an hour, will perk us both up definitely. Let's see in a Two even more. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> we'll regroup in a bit. Ball come out, catch you in a bit. Afternoon, Friday PM update. It's just after 3 pm, and as you can probably see behind me and hear behind me, the wind has really picked up. So, uh, yeah, the plans for this afternoon. Um, to be honest, we've had quite a lazy morning. We've left rods in and Caught up with a little bit of sleep, so we probably had a couple of hours apiece, um, and basically just kind of rested up and had some food and rehydrated and just gen sort of generally just chilled out after the antics of last night, where we were pretty much both of us awake all night. Um, so yeah, moving into this afternoon and this evening, we're going to redo rods probably in the next hour or so, and just see how it goes. Uh, get some bait out, get rods back out, and settle in for the evening. And you never know. Lightning might strike twice. <laughs> but if we have anything like we did last night, it would be unbelievable. So yeah, let's get rocking and uh, we'll catch up with you later. See you in a bit, ball come out. Okay, it's bait prep time again. So we've got some more salt with Smart Liquid. And that is looking awesome. Lovely. The rigs are done. Couple more signet shots ready to go. Well, the weather is just perfect. This wind is absolutely belting through 15 mile an hour southwesterly, and these Grenfell fish love to back off a strong wind. This is looking really, really good for the rest of this afternoon and this evening. Right, let's see how we go. Yeah, a bit more bait prep there. And the lake is just looking incredible. It's kited well left, man. Yeah, I know, it's great. Well done. It's great. Yeah, we've had a little bit of a juggle around with the rods. Uh, we decided to put two rods on the area where I had the five bites last night. So Jason's got a rod on that as well. So basically all we've done, we've, we've swapped one rod over and just moved them down. So. Uh, what we thought was a bite 
on Jason's rods was actually <laughs> what was my left hand rod on his Delkin. I'm gutted. Oh well. Oh well. well let's see what you've snagged. How many social media posts have you made while we've been here, Jace? None. Exactly. It's below me. It's below you? <laughs> of course it is. Here we go. Another lovely mirror. I reckon this one's into the 30s as well. So, uh, first bite this evening. And actually, thinking about it, first bite since four o'clock this morning. So this has definitely been a welcome one. All right, let's get him weighed. I'll report back in a sec. We'll come out. a couple hours sleep and uh, rudely awoken by this one and to be fair this fish has just got bigger from the time I hooked it to the time it went in the net and to the time I'm lifting it up now yeah it's a bit of a unit it's a nice one all right let's get away and we'll be back in a sec
43, 43.4. Yeah. It's kept getting bigger. Man alive, it's another 40. That's awesome. It's been some session. Mmm. Tell me what you got, mate. Well, it's another 40, it's the second of the trip. Fairly blown away, if I'm honest. Actually, no, I'm gonna rephrase that, very blown away. This fish, from the time I hooked it, it was just slow and steady and deliberate and just kept plowing under the rod tip. And this is why it's a chunk. <laughs> Not happy at all. <sighs> well, good morning. 3.30 a.m. Saturday morning. And we got ourselves a nice common. Left hand rod, absolutely belted off. A dogged fight in the deep margins, and this was what was on the end. So, a couple of quick shots. And then it's way and back, and back to bed for me as well. Catch you in a bit. Well, we've got another one. 32.12. So literally, we put the last fish back, and the long rod was off again with this one. Steady on there, so. Superb. <laughs> this, this is true. <laughs> morning, morning, morning. How are the eyes? Not. You, you might need some of that Elemus special bait just to. I think I need a cold iron. It's like I've been boxing all night. Um, you kind of have. Yeah, true. Uh, anyway. If I can open my eyes a little bit, you could blindfold me with a boot lace, I think, this morning. Um, we're about nine o'clock now, Saturday morning, and uh, this will be our final piece to camera, uh, with the two of us, anyway. Um, so I think we'll we'll probably end this I mean, where, where we started. It's a perfect crescendo, isn't it? Two yeah. nights of hectic excellence. Yes, indeed. Looking at the, because I've we've kind of kept a catch log of what's gone on and certainly Thursday and Friday are featured very heavily yeah um, and then one fish at three o'clock um, Saturday morning today um, to kind of finish things off but it's um, it's been an incredible end to the session uh, and I say for both of us because obviously when you fish together for six nights you well you and share the whole experience together so it's been ten years previous to that yes Yes. With the great hair. Yes, indeed, indeed. It was almost like when we used to fish the matches together. Mate, the last two nights, I went into match mode. Yep. Um, but last night was just epic for you. It was awesome. Yeah, a really good run of decent fish. I think another three thirties. Um, that 35 common was awesome. The yeah, 33, me. old Arbuckle. It was, he was a big old boy or girl. Um, and then that 43, which, the fish that got bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, so. did, mate. As soon as I picked that up, I went, hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Um, so, all I can say, mate, is thank you for your company. Thank you for your help. Um, it's been really interesting how both of us have had input on, obviously, on the baiting situation. Yeah. And the rig evolution. Well, and what it's ended up being. Yeah, uh, yeah the evolution of... The rigs that we've both put out in the pond yeah. uh, over the duration of the session because we have kind of there's just little nuances and things where it's just been honed down and changed so probably key things for me pink was the color definitely of the hook bait for whatever reason on this trip absolutely smashed everything absolutely um what we started on stiff hinge rigs ended up 
well the actual hinge section of the of the pop up pop up section got miniaturized yeah got um, yeah got probably halved in, in in size to be honest and then rather than sort of traditional kind of chod style three times obviously in round back out on a on a ring then actually having it sliding on the shank with a mm. with a with well, a stop it's basically our match zig rig yeah yeah beefed up for big fish in wheelie venue absolutely Where yeah we'd scale that right down to like a size 10 small mixer type yeah you know uh, zig hook yeah we just beefed it up for here because it just gives that like just more subtle presentation doesn't it it seemed to work so obviously the other part of it was the the boom section yeah where we started off with a stiffer material then we went to semi-stiff lengthened and then have actually started to reduce to again yeah. so and it just takes do you remember i said the other night uh rig hours yes if you put one rod in for one hour that's like one rig hour so if you fish three rods for one hour you've got three rod hours or rig rod hours yeah and when you start noticing that one outperforms the others in the same period of time you can start to narrow down the bits and then all the bits add up yep. to a final product absolutely and with six rods yeah. effectively in the same swim you can then ring the changes yeah, between yeah. you so it's uh, no it's been really really interesting and perhaps our you know as as is often the case what you start with is not what you end up with so no not at all mate i'm not going to be putting any more wafter rigs out there no well yeah <laughs> well yeah true. mind you i got a bite on it yes you did you but did we got what 15 bites on something else yes that turned out to be better indeed so you're staying on for tonight i have the luxury yes of staying on for one more night and I'll obviously document anything that happens and I'll send it to you as it happens. Fantastic. Um, and it would just be cool to go out on a bit of a crescendo and I'll send you what happens over in the morning. Okay. Superb, we'll do so that then. This will either be... Thank you, my friend. ...an out with the both of us <laughs> or there may be an amendment. Well, let's hope so. For my sake. Fantastic. Have a safe trip. Thanks, mate. Bull out. Can out. Be seeing you. <laughs> so, bull left, I stayed on an extra night. Short of it is, I hooked two, I lost them both. That wasn't good enough. So I'm back, uh, three or four days later, back in the same swim, and I've had a bit of a result. To bring you up the speed, it's probably best we just play the montage.